Hi everyone, welcome to this video, the third in, uh, installment in the series about building your own load cell pedals. So I've downloaded this model, uh, it's a series of set of three pedals actually um, from online and uh, I thought we'd just have a, take a quick look at the CAD model and discuss the design of it because this is very similar to what you'll find uh, from various companies online. Um, that use load cells. So obviously this is the brake pedal. And if I just hide this bracket that mounts to the floor, first of all, so that we can have a look at the exactly how the load cell mounts. So essentially the load cell is held in this carriage, or one end of the load cell, should I say, is held in this carriage. So if I just hide this carriage for a little for a second, you'll see uh, exactly what its mounting position is like. So it's got two little cheek plates either side of the side plates that the load cell bolts through. So clamping one end and then at the other end you've got this arrangement connected to the um, this sort of slider arrangement with some springs and bump rubbers on. So obviously as you press on the pedal and you compress the slider the load builds up and tries to bend the load cell and that's how you get your input into game. Like I say it's very common you'll see the Husingveld, both the Sprints and the Ultimates um, having a similar uh, method of doing things um, and you'll have to use your conscience really to decide whether or not this guy has gone too far with copying those other companies there's certain things about this that I don't like and that I want to tidy up. Um, but as a basic principle and as a way of showing you how they operate, not a bad example. Okay, so with uh, making use of the 3D CAD model, I produced this 2D CAD drawing from it. Uh, and actually if I just go over to the section view, we'll just run through the design a little bit more hopefully make it as clear as possible. So here we can see the section through um, the pedal right down the middle. So we can see we have this slider arrangement which is simply made of a rod end jo joint and uh, a length of bar, coach bolt this could be, um, over which you've got some bump rubbers and in this case here, around here at the bottom they've got um, a coil spring. I don't like this feature. Uh, I know on some of the other types of load cell pedal they have a coil spring but it's never as long as this. This here would give you quite a linear um, rate of um, pedal feel for quite some distance and I'm not sure that that's what you want. I think you want that much smaller coil spring. Um, so I think that that's what I would do uh, when I make these, make that a bit smaller. Um, bump rubber material, um, I should have said really that although I've labelled this as part 3 of the video series, it's, in some ways it's part 4 because I did a video last week, or I skipped doing a video last week on these in order to do a video on a handbrake arrangement that I've got, where I upgraded it with some bump rubber material that um, I got from Amazon, so uh, check out that video because it could be quite useful. Um, and I'm certainly to start with, it would be my intention to um, make use of that bump rubber material on these pedals. Uh, I do actually have some leftover bump rubbers from Husingveld, so probably in the next week or so, I may do um, a comparison and see what the sort of difference is in the material properties of the two. Um, okay, so then I thought about checking out exactly what um, rating of load cell we need because I know that 100 kilograms is used a lot in the DIY builds, um, but also 200 kilogram load cells are used in the commercial or commercially available pedals like the Husing Weld. So I know from data logging. Um, British touring cars that the drivers 
in that type of car tend to push about 60 kilos on the pedal pad. I also know from my time in Formula 1 that F1 drivers can press up to 125 kilos. Um, looking at the ratio of heights from the from the pivot point we can see that we have a pedal ratio down I've made a note down here of just over 2 to 1 so that means that the force that we see at the top of our slider would be 121 kilos um, and then doing a bit of force vector calculations uh, I believe, unless I've got my maths wrong that the load in the slider would be 122.5 kilos which would result in a bending force of a, about 41 kilos in the load cell so that seems to me that a 100 kilo load cell should be fine uh, but if anyone's got an opinion on that wants to check my maths or maybe somebody knows a bit more about load cells and electronics than I do maybe we need to try to keep this in a, uh, the sort of lower end of a larger load cells range for linearity reasons or, or something I don't know I'm not expert enough to know but at first glances it seems to me that 41 kilos means at least for touring car level uh, effort um, 100 kilo load cells should be fine uh, so with these files comes the um, 2D or DXF files for all the laser cutting on these because they are uh, just a collection of laser cut plates out of stainless steel um, that you bolt together. Obviously there's bolts and spacer pieces uh, required as well but they're all standard components that you can buy off the shelf um, from lots of different places. Uh, laser cutting can be expensive if you're buying it on your own uh, if you get together as a group of people um, you can make it a lot more competitive I think the difference between one off and ten off sets um, for something similar um, was about 40% different and 40% cheaper so um, what I'm proposing is if people are interested in going this route um, I'm probably going to change the design of this a little bit. Uh, for example, I don't like metal to metal contact um, in this area here, which is what limits the uh, angular movement of the pedal. Uh, and on that point, this design allows for 30 degrees. Um, but on all my time designing race cars, um, F1 cars mainly, uh, we've always used uh, a figure of 18 degrees. So I think what I would do is I would um, grow a little boss off of here with a um, a protected rubber sleeved bolt for the back of this pedal to hit so that you're not going metal to metal hard stop. You've got some sort of feel there and you're not damaging uh, the metal over time. Uh, and also I would do it such that it could be adjusted so that you've got, like I say, a standard uh, 18 degree angle or you could have, have up to 30 degrees um, should you wish um, I don't think for any of my needs or my customers that we will need to go that far uh, but there's no harm in putting the adjustment in in case um, so if anyone's interested I can put together a little group purchase of um, my revised version of this design um, so please feel free to contact me, you can email me or leave a comment below um, or why not join our face, uh, like our Facebook page and make contact through that. Uh, the link, contact links, link to the Facebook page etc will be left in the um, description of the video. I'll also leave a link in the video, uh, in the description for this model so you can have a closer look at it yourself. Uh, like I say, it also includes a, a throttle and a clutch pedal, um, but the way of operating the load cell is slightly different, um, and maybe I'll do go through that in a different video. Uh, I like to keep these short and sweet so that 
um, you can pick out the useful information without having to listen to me drone on too much. Uh, I'm also, like I said in the uh, previous video, I'm looking at hall, set, hall effect sensors for uh, throttle and clutch, just because I believe that the uh, linear way of operating those and the sort of no contact um, requirements is probably means they're going to be um, one cheaper and two more reliable to build and um, to make and operate. So, uh, but I'll uh, certainly do a video and details on that uh, when the time comes. Okay, so for this week, I uh, just wanted to keep this video short and sweet and just tell you where we've got to, uh, give you something else to do a little bit more research on. Like I say, you know, feel free to contact and join our sort of group purchase of these parts if if that's what you want to do. Um, so once again we're getting close on that thousand subscribers total. Uh, I can do a few more funky things with videos when we get over the thousand subscribers. So um, you know, please like the video, please share and um, obviously please subscribe to the channel. So until probably next week, um, thanks for watching and see you soon.